first thing that I'm going to ask you guys to do is to have a look at those statements and for each of those statements I want you to decide whether they're true or false and now will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this video and select true or false. Now actually we have yet to explain what exactly is a force. Now intuitively a force is either just a push or a pull. However, let's dig a little bit deeper. I really really like this definition so much here that I'm actually going to circle this with my rainbow pen. So this is uh, it's an important one for our understanding. In other words, a force is an interaction which, when unopposed, will change the acceleration of the object. Now, let me give you an example. Let's imagine that we have an object. In this case, I've drawn a sphere. The actual type of object here is irrelevant. And uh, this is supported on something like a shelf. So um, we have two forces acting. We have the force uh, due to gravity, which is the weight acting downwards, and we have the normal reaction from this support, which is acting upwards. Now, let's imagine that if, that if we were to just remove the support force, so we can just remove this vector r over here, and if we were to remove this uh, the support, we can't just remove one of them. So. Uh, what will actually happen to the object let's be a little bit careful like that the object will begin to accelerate downwards if we were to remove the support another example of a um, of a force which is not being opposed this one is a little bit more of a counterintuitive example but this is a ball which is thrown upwards so this ball is actually moving along here it has no forces acting in the upwards direction it had a force originally which propelled it upwards however as soon as it left let's say the cannon or or the person throwing it up or something like that all the forces have been removed from the ball so the only force acting on it is once again the weight and in this case this ball will be slowing down until it reaches some maximum height at which the speed is zero then will drop back down so in other words an unbalanced force causes an acceleration and in both of those cases the acceleration a is just 9.81 meters per second per second which is the acceleration due to gravity on average around the earth so a forces interaction which when unopposed will change the acceleration of the object this is really well summarized by newton's second law which uh, is written down over here and it states that the net force acting on an object is proportional to the acceleration that constant of proportionality is the mass a force is measured in newtons so i'm just going to write down the units of this equation the uh, si units for mass is the kilogram and the acceleration is measured in meters per second squared and this is a statement of newton's second law now, a really really important part of this that this force here is the net resultant force it's so important i'm going to use this pen over here so this is the net or the resultant force like so now this equation is telling us really that the amount of force that must be acting on an object is proportional to the mass and also to the acceleration it's also telling us that the acceleration on an object so if we were to just rearrange that for for a the acceleration of an of an object is going to equal to the net force acting on it divided by the mass now let's apply this to a couple of examples we have two objects one is a 10 kilogram object the other one is a 100 kilogram object 
Both of those objects have a 10 Newton force acting horizontally across and what I'd like you to find is the acceleration. This will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this video and quickly attempt that question. Okay, perfect. Now let's go through the answers. So in the first case, our force is, uh, let's just write it underneath. So our force is 10 Newtons, F over A is equal to F over M. Our force is 10 Newtons and our mass is 10 kilograms, which is going to give us an acceleration of one meters per second squared. In the second example, let's once again write down the formula. So A is equal to F over m our force is still 10 newtons and our acceleration is now 100 kilograms uh, our mass sorry is now 100 kilograms and if we were to just cancel those out we're going to get the, the, that the acceleration is 0.1 meters per second squared so we can see that if the force is equal the higher the mass the lower the acceleration. And one final question that we need to discuss is what is the Newton? Remember, anytime we are defining a unit, we need to do so in terms of other units. The first thing we need to do is just write down a basic equation for that unit. So in this case, the equation is F is equal to MA. Now, what we do next is we substitute unit values into that equation. Unit values simply mean means one. So one Newton is going to be one kilogram times one meters per second squared of acceleration. So in other words, a Newton will be the net force required for an object of one kilogram to acquire an acceleration of one meters per second squared. And incidentally, this is also the base unit for the Newton. So the base unit is kg ms to the power of minus two. Okay, folks, so hopefully we have a good understanding of Newton's second law and also what a force is. If there are any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. Thank you.